E. Uh -huh. Look. Look. <laughs> e. What's going on? What's going on, Mike? Hey. What you, what you, what you got going on? I'm waiting on, I'm waiting on my chick. I'm waiting on my chick. <laughs> uh, waiting on, I've been um, waiting on my chick. You're not going to get it. <laughs> wow. Why not? Because. She do, she do nails now. She got money. You hear me, Aaron? Ooh. Thanks. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Are you ready to rock and roll? I think we're going to all set up okay. now. Your connection good? Yeah, I think so. I saw it popped up on Facebook that we're on, so I paused it right now just till we're all set. Okay. Trying to see. Is the link working? All right. I'm ready, Ron. All right. You ready, Jamon? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Sounds good. All right. I'm Ryan. I think we're to introduce, but uh, thanks for hopping on here. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a little, uh, let's, well, we'll do an introduction and then I'll introduce you, give a little of your background. All right. Okay. Right. And, and I got, I got, I got a few questions to you too, at some point too, Ryan, just just about overseas, dog. You know, just to throw that in there. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. So, oh, we can you, do know, that you know, Jamon's plays for the second best team in the state of Virginia behind Liberty. So, it's all good. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Liberty. No <laughs> way. My yeah, little cousin, uh, y'all got a couple of rod receivers and uh, kit returners from Jacksonville. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got. Football team is loaded, man. We got <laughs> yeah. it's so weird, Virginia Tech's coming to Liberty this year to play. So <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. They, they're trying to make some money. I can't think of the kit return. He always number three. What what the uh, Demar Demario Douglas? That's my cousin. Okay. Yeah, he's fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At number five, the receiver just left. He's from Jacksonville too. Oh, Stubbs or Stubbs. Yeah, you from Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stubbs, something like that. Yeah, yeah. They're from Jacksonville. Yeah, it'll be weird, man. Yeah. We're in football's in a good yeah. spot, but <laughs> but Virginia, Virginia Tech, man. Not yeah. Football. <laughs> All right, let's roll here. So we'll right, talk, we'll talk, uh, we'll give you an introduction. What we'll, Erwin, you know, enter, you know, give you some uh, ask you some questions and then we'll kind of recap last night's games and then uh preview tomorrow and then you know depending on timing hit on some nba stuff so okay you, you all good with that yeah i'm good all right sounds good understanding girl hello good evening everybody welcome to hoops talk on sports presented by the sports cast today is august 3rd 2022 and i am with my main man, Erwin Dudley. And today we're uh, also have Jamon Gordon, former Virginia Tech uh, player from 2003, 2007. And uh, here to talk a little bit about the final four last night and preview tomorrow's championship game. How you doing, Erwin? Good, man, how you doing? Good, yes. And to all our viewers, remember to uh, follow us on all our social media platforms. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, if you do download our podcast on Apple, please leave, leave a ratings review. We would appreciate that. Jamon, thank you for hopping on today. Uh, what did you think about last night's game? Oh, thank you for having me. Oh, you know, I'm a North Carolina fan, even though when I went to Virginia Tech, but I grew up a North Carolina fan. So, you know, uh, I was happy to see him win, kind of sad to see Coach K leave. He was always kind of nice to me in uh, AC Media days. Even after yeah. the games, he would always kind of talk to me. But uh, it was a great game. Like, it's one of the best Final Four games you're going to see with two rivals like that, you know, like. And um, But it was a great game back and forth. Um, I think Duke made a lot of little simple mistakes down the line. Love made some big shots. And it was basically about shot making. It wasn't really down to effort because both teams gave great effort. But uh, it was just really yeah, down who made the most shots. 
Absolutely. We'll get we'll dive big into these games in a little bit. Uh uh Erwin, how do you know uh Jamon? Man, <clears throat> I've been knowing Jamon for a while. Um and then we finally got a chance to play it together in uh two thousand when was it, 2016, 17, 15, yeah, no, 2015, no, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, and uh, form a relationship, man, and you know we talk, we talk often, and so we, you know, we keep in touch with each other. We know each other, family and stuff. So it just, you know, just an overall good, you know, good connection, good person to to, to be called a friend. Awesome. So uh, you you got some questions for uh, Jamon, Erwin? Yeah, Jamon. I want you know. I, you yeah, know, I really, I really hit Erwin. Say it again. You hit? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. I say Erwin, Erwin was cheating overseas. He had a Turkish <laughs> passport. So his team was really, you know, like, at the time in Turkey, you can have, uh, what is three Americans on the court at one time? Yeah. Three yeah, foreigners. Yeah. yeah. And, and Erwin and Coach found a way where they really had four foreigners on the court at the same time. So it was like four foreigners and one Turkish player. And if you know about overseas, Turkish players not the greatest, but as long as you got one on the court, and four Americans. They really was four Americans against me and two other Americans, two Turkish players. So they took advantage of the rule. I, I always remember he will always be there. I, I, I didn't know we had a dual citizenship here. Unless you tell yeah. like you really don't know me. Yeah, hey, hey, I'm gonna do I thought I, I thought I mentioned that yeah, I'm a dual citizen. Yeah, I got dual citizenship. Oh, wow. Yeah. There you, oh, yeah. You, and, you and Ennis Cantor there. Uh, ball yeah, the dual citizenship. Yeah, I mean, but me and him are different now. I'm not, you know, I'm not. Something I'm, like that. I'm, right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Talk like to you in Turkey and everything. <laughs> <laughs> they love him. They love him in Turkey. He the man in Turkey. Yeah. But uh, playing with Erwin, like him and Lynn Grill, like they taught me so much off the quit um, that I was grateful for, like. I probably would be in a totally financial different space financially if I didn't listen to him and Earl Lynn. So like he said for me, he more like a big uh he taught, taught me a lot. Awesome. Yeah. You know. Aaron, you there? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm here. It's yeah, I think we might have lost uh, Jamal. Jamal, you see it there? Open my mind to a lot of different stuff. He, he more like a brother to me. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. This is um, it, it was cutting in and out you know, for yeah. whatever reason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can hear me now? I'm good. Yeah, yeah I can hear everything. Now. Hey, so Jamal, so um, so so you know, I know uh, I know what you're doing, but tell you know, get a get view of the inside of kind of what you're doing now, you know, what you're doing, whatever since you retired, and uh, you know, you're not playing basketball anymore. I know, I see you training. You got your your training going on, two two training. You can talk about that a little bit. Uh, man, I, I I'm not gonna lie, I kind of been struggling with not playing basketball no more. Like they really don't just. Uh, live without playing basketball. So uh, I started to do two training. I opened my training facilities maybe a year ago. And it, it, it's going okay, but, you know, the kids are different now. You know, parents are more involved. So it, it's really sometimes you babysitting the kids more than you training them. But uh, it's going good. I'm thinking about opening the air. You have uh, started the program. I got some – I really try to stay away from high school kids. I really like to train middle school and – elementary school kids so I can knock out all the bad footwork, all the bad, bad attitudes. Uh, I, I got a real estate company. That's going good. The real estate in Florida is going great. Uh, everything is overpriced. So right now I'm in the process of selling a lot of stuff. Uh, and just, you know, take it one day at a time. Hopefully I can get <laughs> Hopefully I can get me a job training or doing something in the NBA. I got plans on doing that this summer. Going to summer league and trying to, uh, you know, the team, but 
other than that, I'm just chilling, getting back the time I miss with my daughter being overseas and just chilling with the family. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you said that too, though, because like you said, when you retire from you know from the game, you know people, you know you're not taught how to you know so how to live and you know and not have basketball and you know and once you once you once you start playing basketball, it's like you know it, you're trying to you're basically scrambling trying to you know figure out what you want to do, and uh, you know the same thing for me. Like you know I miss basketball, um, you know you know because it was you know been part of my life since I was six seven years old and. But uh, like you said, though, your kids and stuff like that, you know, you can't that time that you miss with them, you can't get that time back. And so, you know, you just have to kind of kind of find other ways to adjust and kind of, you know, I guess adjust it and move your mind, try to take your mind off of basketball, um, you know, mm -hmm. as it relates to you playing because, you know, <laughs> you ain't trying, you know, you're not going to go back or whatever because, you know, you, you, when you was doing it, you enjoyed it. And, you know, it was great, you know, great for you and your family and all that. But then, you know, once, you know, like you said, once the ball stopped bouncing, you know, it, it pretty much stopped bouncing. So I can I can definitely relate to you on that. Life is hard, definitely without that basketball, boy. Yeah, it it's is. It's, it's, totally, it's totally different. It's totally different. Well, it seems like you found a good way to transition, you know, from what, you know, one phase of life to another using. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 You I, have I, to. You know, life will pass you by. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's listening to you, uh, you know, Erwin, you know, last couple weeks and then, you know, Luke Heron go down last week, you know, guys, you know, that, you know, we, we watch, you know, basketball all the time and we see the glamour of, you know, the pros here, you know, what, what's the grind like over in Europe you know, on a daily basis there compared to, you know, what we see in the NBA, like, <laughs> I know it's night and night, but you know, I think this would be great for our listeners to hear, you know, what you know what you had to do to, to keep your dream alive of playing basketball. For me, I get so upset when I see NBA players complain about anything. Social distance, I mean social, I don't know how to be they're not around their families, them this and that and you know, like playing overseas, nothing's guaranteed. Nothing, not a contract, mm -hmm. not nothing. Like, yep. I don't been in situations where people still owe me to this day thousand dollars. So, I don't been in situations was I was getting paid five six months. Uh, uh, imagine you being a grown man, they treating like kids. You have curfew, uh, jail rooms on the road. Uh, the practices you practicing, it's not. There's no playing around in practice unless you fortunately get a cool coach, and that's rare. Right, um, yeah. It's tough, man. You you really be isolated. If your family ain't with you, isolated. So you, you have to struggle learning how to be around people a lot because you home. When you get out of practice, you go home because 9 out of 10, you got two practices a day, so you really don't have no time. Uh, it's tough, man. It's not for everybody. And I tell you, like, you better – Make it to the NBA because overseas ain't where you want to go. Like, yeah, it takes a special person to get over there and actually make a name for themselves. And that's uh, that's some true. You know, adapt life. to a living. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like for me, I went to Turkey first, and uh, I. I I played against Irvin my first year, matter of fact. I was like, I'm tell you, right? I'm tell you, right? Man, I'm from Florida. I, I ain't know nothing about Turkey. Yeah, yeah. I ain't know nothing about Turkey. I'm thinking everybody's <laughs> going to be hot dog. Nobody <laughs> speak English, man. I got over there. It was almost, it was normal. You know, like it was normal for them. I, I, I really think that I regret. I think if I was more mature, I probably would have never came back to the States if I knew what I knew. Like, because it's so peaceful. Like, you see a lot of stuff on TV. Like, we never went through nothing or when, like, for yeah. real, like, yeah. it was peaceful. Nah. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, just like you said, though, I... Uh, they, tr they treated us good. Like, yeah. Yeah, my, my first year, I, I did Israel. And like you said, you know, I got off the plane and, you know, people spoke English there. So I was like, man, and it was, you know, palm trees everywhere. So, it was, you know, it seemed, it seemed like America to me. Mm -hmm. But then... When you go and you hit Turkey, you know, Turkey was was something totally different. Um, I remember the first night, the first night I actually got there in Turkey. Um, you know, they dropped me you know, there, they do it normally, they check you to your um, 
to your, your apartment or your hotel, or whatever, and be like, okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Drop you off. <laughs> yeah, see you tomorrow. Straight and to practice. So, <laughs> straight to practice. Yeah. And so I was like, you know, so I didn't have anything. So I, you know, I, I, I flag a taxi down. They dropped me off in the apartment. So I flag a taxi down, like, you know what I'm saying? Trying, it was, I, they told me it was a mall, like right down the street from the house. So I'm like, I'm trying to flag, I flag a taxi down. I'm saying mall, he don't understand what I'm saying. I'm saying everything under the sun. He didn't know what I'm saying. So I ended up just walking. I ended up just walking to the mall or whatever. And then end up, ended up taking a taxi back. But man, it's just like one of the many stories or whatever. Like once you get up, once you get across the Z, man, it's like okay, they drop you off. Like we'll see you in the morning, you know, you know, whatever. If you need anything, you know, you can call them, but they you might get an answer, you might not get an answer. <laughs> and they and they treat the NBA treat their foreign players. They they get them a translator. They make sure they okay. Like. Like they the foreign players, man, it's so easy. Like, man, in Europe, everything is a grind. Like, you yeah. gotta fight to be in head on. Fight to do this. You gotta argue with people for your plane tickets. You gotta, it's nothing easy about playing overseas. You get to a certain level, you're making great money and it's not paying the taxes and stuff like that. And once you've gone six, seven months, man, you got four more months to go. Like, yeah. Yeah. And if you play yearly like me and Irwin did in cups, like if your family there, you got a road trip, you might not see them but twice, two, two times a month. Especially now they playing fifty six games in Euro League. Now I can only imagine yeah. how much them oh, uh, yeah. play on, on the road and it it's other stuff. Somebody down your family, like they really don't want you to go home. They want you to go they home. Really yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's a hope. Yeah, they really don't want that. They don't care about nothing but basketball. Like we don't yeah. been in a situation. Remember they somebody blew somebody up on the side of the uh, gym. They they didn't care. They yeah, were talking they about care. going and play the game. <laughs> yeah, they were like, "Dang, yeah, I ain't care about that." I mean, at the end of the yeah, day, that's like, crazy. They look, we, like, they look at you on the con. They, they, they ain't care. So like they, can, yeah. they look at we got you. You know, you over here. You signed to a contract, and you basically you, you basically under our rules or whatever. And that's how and that's how they try to play. And like you said, you know. They treat the NBA guys and stuff, and their foreign players when they come here to the U.S. They treat it, they're treated totally different than than what we you know than what we are yeah. overseas. You know what I'm saying? You know you do have your good, you do your you do have your good experiences though. You know what I'm saying? You do have to you know you have your bad experience. You just have to kind of take all of them, you know, together and strive. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, because you're seeing stuff that you never would have seen, especially kids coming from America. We go to Russia, we go to Spain, we go to all these different countries. Oh yeah. Luckily, sometimes you get to the practice, go to the hotel, go to sleep, wake up, game, and you back out of there the next day. Like, mm -hmm. so, uh, when I was getting closer to knowing that I was going to retire, I started going out a little bit more, started exploring the cities a little bit more, started doing more stuff. Yeah. Which I wish I would. Yeah. What I did when I was younger. Um, but, you know, I loved it. You know, I got some Turkish friends, some Greek friends, people that I never forget. I got some young teammates in the NBA. Uh, and my daughter got a chance to see the world early. So I, I'm definitely happy. Like, I met her and I oh, met yeah. so many other Americans that we, you know, we got bonds forever, even just players. Because when you overseas and we see each other, we all like family. We're so happy to mm -hmm. see each other, you know, like. It's an amazing feeling when you see each other on the road. Like Luke Hangor. I probably would have never met Luke in America in my life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Luke would turn out to be like a little brother. You know, Luke yeah, turned yeah, out to be exactly. like a little brother, funny, joking all the time. Yeah. So him, Reggie, like, we all taught each other stuff and, you know, learned different people back all us like the football. So that kind of came together, especially on our team. It was mostly about football, having basketball pools and all type of stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, it yeah. was amazing times. Yeah, it was amazing times. So, so you're saying a lot of the Americans, no matter what team you're on in certain leagues, you were close to, you know, you, you know. Yeah, for the most part, you're gonna know some, you're gonna know some of the Americans, um, you know, from other teams, like you know, um, especially like where we were in Turkey. So, you know, Istanbul was was the place that everybody wanted to come. So, you know, you'll you'll run into Americans all the time because 
Istanbul where everything went on. And you, know, you had all the other sort. You had was seven seven teams in Istanbul right there in Istanbul, and then all the other teams they was they were only like a 45, 50 minute flight away from Istanbul. So. You know, so you'll see, you know, see, see Americans, they'll, they'll fly in all the time just to get away from their city because, you know, Istanbul has so much stuff to do and so much, you know, history and culture. Yeah. And I, when I left Turkey, I went to Italy for like, I went to uh, Saloniki, Greece for like um, two months and I went to Italy. Small city. I couldn't even, I couldn't even live nowhere beside Istanbul, like. I stayed yeah. in the same apartment for six years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I the same apartment for six years. Yeah. yeah, I had done got used to staying there. Everything was normal. Like, and people don't understand it's different type of teams in Europe. It's high level, mid level, low level. So it's division two. You know what I'm saying? It's All different. Of yeah, division three. Yeah, yep. it's different. So it's the quality of players you're playing with, the more amount of work you got to do. Like, when me and Irwin got to a certain level, like, I didn't care how many points I scored no more. It was more based about winning, getting bonus mm-hmm. money and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. When you're younger, you really still stuck in the American mindset of scoring a lot. But I could, I fundamentals, reading pick and roll, understanding players, being more. Uh, we watch film. <laughs> man, they can't imagine how much we watch film, man. Like, they can't imagine. Like yeah. I'm watching the games. I'm like, man, I can see everything they're doing in, in a, this fast. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But that's the one. The one thing too, though. I miss. Um, that's the stuff that I miss. Hated film, but I wish. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say one. The one thing about, it, like you said, you do you do learn stuff. I remember, man, my first year over there, man. I remember Sharonda Jessica Cabbages and and Maceo Bass. I remember, you know, Maceo played in Michigan. Yeah. Man, and I was in Israel. Man, I thought they was probably I thought they was the, the greatest two pick and roll players ever. I mean, bro, I'm talking <laughs> about like because you know, because you never had you never saw pick and roll ran like that way the way Maccabi, the way they ran it when I first got up, yeah. and they and they were winning. Man, like, man yeah. like, they ran the pick and roll to like perfection. And I'm talking about it perfection, he, he yeah. Star, yeah, like he never missed that like that that pull up. And then if pull you know saying that, yeah, and then if you uh, try to contest his shot, he throwing over Mason. You know how Mason was jumping out of the gym. Yeah. I mean, he yeah, he was jumping out of the gym. So he was like, man, so we like you just learn so much, you know, because like I said, back then, like, you know, you ran picking, you played picking roll, stuff like that when you was coming up, you know, stateside. But man, it wasn't nothing like that though. Like, you know, that's no. one of the things they did. They 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 literally try to, you know, perfect the screen roll and you know, really you really learn so much of being overseas though. Uh, they last, turned me into wow. a pick and roll player for sure. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my last thing before we, you know, we turn into you know, uh, stateside America. Uh, you know, so obviously, you know, you guys, you know, when you, you're 18 years old, you go and play college basketball here. You know, they're playing, you know, pro basketball at a young age in Europe, right? Is that kind of mm-hmm. you know what what kind of develop? You know, are they? develop you know are they more mature developed you know as players earlier over there or you know you saw from your experiences they they don't have a choice they don't have a choice to stay young they don't they don't they don't give them a chance to if they're good enough they you got yeah yeah sure kids. they practice so when we had kids in our practice 15 16 years old on our team yep. they maybe yep. they may they may practice three times a day and some of the kids Give a prize up like Luca. Luca was he from Slovenia. He was already moved out of his own country. Uh yeah, 14, 15 years family. old. Yeah, yeah, wow. years old. Yeah. So they they're way more mature. They're like they're not entitled. They they really they 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 let them know to stay humble. So if now mm-hmm. you're 15, 16, years old playing against somebody like me or Earl because we feel like that's how we're supposed to treat players. We're going to treat them equally. Man, them players be killing them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true. Foreign yeah, players talk true. to them bad. Yeah. <laughs> talk to yeah, them bad. True. Like, it's no, yeah. it's no mothers coming to save you. It's no mother talking to no coach. Yeah, if you know, you know, I, I, I was... kid got to talk to his agent. Yeah. 
you know, I, you know, obviously, I'm not, I, it's a small percentage of these Luka Donich or, you know, Ante Canupas out there. But when they get there, you know, to the NBA, they always, at 18 years old, they had that chip on their shoulder already, you know, because they've already experienced the grind of playing pro basketball. And it, it makes a difference. I think, you know, um, the way, you know, I feel like they're always, they don't miss a beat when they get to the NBA, you know, when they come, you know, these uh, European players. Yeah, especially, you know, when talented ones like Luca. The look, I mean, Luca, he, I mean, he didn't miss a step. I mean, he played at the highest level in the Euro League. So he was he was uh, doing well in the Euro League. And then he just kind of came here. This the NBA really kind of the one thing about him though, he just kind of he, he he knows how to play. Um he's not the fastest player, he don't jump the highs, but he makes everybody play play to his play to his speed. And that and and when you do that right there. That's a recipe for success. I mean, he can't guard anybody, but he knows, you know, so he knows how to get his shot off. He can make he can make shots and you know, he know and he's tall enough to to see over people. That's another thing. So that 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 that's that's a big yeah. advantage for him as well as a point guard. Yeah. And right. these new these new kids actually wants to go to the NBA. Them guys that we again, they didn't they didn't have no dream on to the NBA. They didn't care. Like they looked yeah. at the NBA like it's a joke. Yeah, they didn't yeah. care. Like we it's a lot of players that we played against was pretty great NBA players. There was a lot of Lucas before Lucas, but Luca had a chance to see Spanulis, Damatidis, Milos, and Yavi Cabbages. And he like a perfect blend of all these players in one that he saw girl and actually want to go to the NBA. So and for him, for him it's easy. He don't have to go yeah. to arenas where they throwing stuff at you. He don't have to go to arenas where <laughs> yeah. he don't have to hear yeah, yeah, he don't have to hear a coach that's cussing him like he the worst player in the world. Like he don't have to do that. NBA for him, like the passes he making in the NBA is normal mm-hmm. passes. You look unbelievable in the NBA. Them normal passes to me, I'm looking at like that's normal. Cause they yeah. teach you that at a young age over there. So and it, it looks, you know, you know Jermaine, you know, so I, easy I, to me when he playing because it's more space. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. You know, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm Mavericks on my team. I was a Dirk guy, and it was easy to transition into being a Luca. So I've been a Mavs guy. You know, <laughs> it, it drives me crazy sometimes. <laughs> you know, especially today, I'm like, he gets to the basket. You know, and I don't know if this is what they're talking. He's got easy too, and he kicks out for the three. I'm like, you know. I'm, I just, you know, that's the NBA way, you know, that's what he does. But I'm like, darn analytics, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it's not. But he literally, how many points he leaves on the board because at the last second, he'll throw those crazy. He'll kick it out. <laughs> yeah. He'll, he'll kick it out. And and it, the thing is, what what's going to hold him back is from a, like a lot of Europeans, the difference between Greek Freak and the rest of the Europeans, Greek, Greek Freak actually worked on his body. Yeah, see how his body yeah. looked. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, body. I mean the intro today, the day he got Dirt. Drafted, yeah. I mean, seeing his yeah. body compared to what he is now. I mean, that's yeah, he's got some natural ability, but he did a lot out of himself. He did, yeah. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, look, it's a look at the rest of the arguing. foreigners. Look at the rest of the yeah, look at the rest of the foreigners. They don't work on their body and they never rest their body. So soon in the season over, they're going back to their national teams. And they killing them, working them to death. They don't care that they're in the NBA. They're gonna practice them two times a day in national team, regardless. Yeah. Like they are killing mean, their bodies. It, it showed the Mavericks this year. You know what? The first month of the season, Luca was dead tired. Yeah, Luca, he, he, he was so he was so he was out of shape too, though. It's, I think he, he, was, he burned yeah. out in the Olympics, and then I think he did nothing for you know months going to training camp, but. It's kind of like his MO since he's come in the league that first month, two months, he's just out of shape. And then you get to, you know, the the calendar flips to New Year and he's just a different player. But mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know what he's yeah, doing overseas. The, 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 <laughs> the, injury, the injury's gonna them injuries are gonna kick in. He keep doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like you, you see how Dirk just drastically just went down. Dirk just drastically just went boom. Like you ain't you ain't taking no breaks. You gotta heal your body. Like they playing basketball for two months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that I, and that's why I think you know when we talk about like a Erwin's guy, LeBron, man, his how much <laughs> basketball he plays, you know, at his age, like 
it's just amazing, you know, the things he can do, you know, 38 years old and how much year on basketball, whether, you know, right from NBA playoffs to national team, like it's crazy, you know, what he, you know, the type of. He, hey, but he, but he invests but, a lot into his body though. He invests a whole bunch into his body. So that's how he's able to do it. Cause he got, I mean, I, he's a, he's a freak too though, but he got a lot of miles on him. But yeah, a lot of miles, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I miss but guess what? The best thing he didn't get on his body was college miles. Yeah. You don't count. Them college miles, them some miles, but college, you <laughs> played college for four years. They took two, three years off. They took five years off your career. I'm telling you, four years <laughs> in college, it's a lot of unnecessary running, unnecessary drills, unnecessary practice. Like, once I got the plan as a pro, I'm like, we could have done all this in college in the bro, hours. Bro, hours. Hey, I said the same thing. I said, bro, we never ran. I uh, said, when I, when I turned with I'm like, bro, we never ran this. We, we, I said, when I to go back and think about it in my mind, bro, we never ran that much. Never. You know what I'm saying? Overseas. Like in college, bro, it was like something different. But overseas. Unnecessary. You know, Un pro <laughs> plan, like if you try for the NBA team, man, they're not doing all that unnecessary on your body. You got to go to the scrum coach. He doing running, you get in practice, coaches, you might be in practice three hours in college, man. Like, for what? <laughs> yeah, like, that's true. It's just unnecessary, like, and you think you're in the practice, you're talking about summertime all the way to March, then you, they give you two weeks off, you back in the gym. Mm -hmm. Man, if I knew it, I knew it. Overseas, I would have left my sophomore year and went overseas, but I would have wasted my time. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be making money earlier. That's all yep. I'm talking about. It. And you mm -hmm. missed out on some NIL there, too, Jamal. <laughs> hey, man, the, the way you're going to talk about that, they NIL, boy. Ooh. What? Man. The NIL, I would have been yeah. rich. I would have been rich. I would have been rich. Yeah, you would have owned Blacksburg. <laughs> you out of school. What they to kick me out of school? They thought I was messing with the boosters already at Virginia Tech. I didn't kick me out of school. <clears throat> and I right, am, so, boy. So, so you, you're a Virginia Tech guy. You know, do you have some pride in you know half the Final Four being from the ACC? Oh, definitely, I got some pride in the ACC because the ACC thought they took over for basketball. <laughs> you know, like nah, <laughs> their teams always fall off. Once Kentucky went down, the SEC just full of hype teams. They look good in the regular season. You know, Miami made it to the lead eight. You know, you know, basketball is an ACC thing. Yeah, we're gonna lead the football to the SEC, but you know, and even in football, that kind of shaky because it's always one team. The rest of the teams be a lot of teams brag on the SEC. They're not that good either. The whole side of Florida SEC, the eastern side, is terrible. Besides that Georgia, is, Florida true. terrible, true. Tennessee's terrible. Like so, it's a lot of bad teams in the SEC football. But in basketball, I think when I played in the Big East freshman year, so I understood being in another league, and that was when Syracuse, UConn, and all these other teams was great. And in the Big East, it was more physical, slow down. When we got to SEC, it's a different feeling, man. Like. Playing so mm -hmm. many games just in North Carolina, Wake Forest, Duke, North Carolina, NC State. Uh, the hardest two teams to meet to play was State and Clemson. Two teams you don't think about, like because everybody can get up for North Carolina and Duke. That's that's a no brainer. But Florida State and Clemson gym, I, I don't think I ever won in either gym. Miami, Boston College, they got more teams than I know the game and. Uh, Syracuse and all that, but the ACC, it's just a different feeling, different speed. Uh, this is mostly guard, so that's what really win the tournament is guard, so mm -hmm. that's why the ACC do so good in the tournament. Yeah, you know, I mean, so let's let's dive into, you know, a little bit, you know, we, the, you know, North Carolina Duke game. Uh, what do you, you know, so I'll start, you know, what made, you know, North Carolina came in, you know, as an AC, what do you think was the key for them to kind of turn it on, you know, the last little bit of regular season into the, you know, tournament? What's the difference? They, they show in their bench, they play seven players. Um, three people actually shoot the ball. If you watch the game, Love, yeah. Love 
I can't think of the white kid name. Manic. And, uh, yeah, very Manic. Yeah, very Manic, yeah. Manic, the Peacock, okay. yeah, Peacock, Peacock get, his, Peacock get his shots, but nobody else really takes shots. They're supposed to shoot the other kid. I think number one, he like a punisher. He get easily shoot the open threes. He's short in the bench. They know who's going to get the ball. They understand what they're going to do, and they're making shots. And that's – making shots is a part of the game. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, they it's believing just in each other. Yeah. If you watch them, you watch yeah. them. They never arguing. They always touching each other. They always picking each other up. They run into each other. They uh, the coach is not yelling too much. And once you get that type of vibe, they remind you of Syracuse 03, that nobody believed in them. They just got hot, and then. Yeah, I mean, last night it's like Kansas let them control yeah. the pace. Yeah. You got two great guards in Love and Davis, and you know, and you got a guy who's just unselfish to willing to give up his body inside of Baycock. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, because you look at Duke and you got, you know, you have four maybe pros, first round pros on that team, you know, and yeah. maybe Baycock's a lottery because of his athleticism, but you really don't got any of the huge pros on that other than that on that uh, right. team, Love. you know. But I think that's that desire we talk about that yeah, the North Carolina had. You know, they take that Duke punch every time and they give her right back. And I think that was good. I mean, you're just always waiting last night for me. I was like, when is Duke going to just turn it on, turn it on? But they just never were able to because North Carolina just hit, hit them, keep hitting them. You know, especially second half, love kept hitting those tough three pointers, you know. And uh, there are some things I think. See, that was know, good. Yeah, Paolo could have taken advantage of it when you know, Baycock hurt his ankle. Or anytime Manic is on somebody, you should always be go after him. I think you know. Yeah, he uh, he uh, he don't guard. He don't guard that well. He didn't. He didn't no. want any of Ben Carroll last night. But uh, <clears throat> but love. I think love. Love man. He's been he's been the, the key. He's been that key to success though. Because I mean, when they need a need a basket down the stretch or any point in the game, like he was one. He was the one that delivered for him. Um, you know, Baycott, he played, he's been he played, he's been playing well on the inside. Um, he tweaked his ankle last night and that shouldn't affect the game for tomorrow. But I mean, but if you look at it though, that over the last that last few games, man, Love's been playing outstanding. Like he's been see, playing like yeah. See, that what scares me about North Carolina. If he have an off game, they done. Yeah, that's true. If he have an off sure. game, they done. He if he have an off game, he has to score. 22 to 26 every game. And that scares me because Kansas is going to put number 10. I can't think his name on him. He's a great defender. What hurt North Carolina? I mean, Duke last night, they got no pick and roll action. It's all three threes and layups. Threes and layups. They got no mid range shot. Yep, no little alley oop off the North Carolina took it away from them and they let North Carolina control the momentum. They I mean, only play seven players, and I mean, you know, I think Williams never got in the rhythm because he got foul trouble early in the first half. You know, I mean, he's a seven foot force down there. First time they played in Chapel yeah. Hill, you know, Baycock couldn't yeah. stop him, um, so he never got. Griffin was non-existent. You know, last night, you know, Ben Carroll had a you know good game. You know, Roach had a decent game. You know, but they. The you know the pros didn't make enough pro like moves I think you know, but you know, at the end you know the better team I think won in North Carolina you know yeah. the little things you know and um, so you yeah. know we we'll, we'll flip over you know we'll talk a little bit Villanova Kansas you know what were your thoughts on those games guys I never I never I didn't see the game but I didn't like Villanova anyways they they um. When I watched them, I think it was late. I didn't like them because their guards don't make no plays. They all off the catch players. Yeah. Um, they don't, they don't really beat you off the dribble like mostly of the um, other uh, that they had. They mostly dribble drive team, and this year yeah. it was like most to get to the basket, kick out, off two feet, catch and shoot, pump fake drive. And if you don't have nobody to beat you off the dribble. And their pick and roll game was terrible. Kansas, Kansas is a team that they can do all three phases. They can post up, they can play pick and roll, and they can get in the break. Yeah, and so yeah, I kind of knew that was going to be an easy game for Kansas. 
Yeah, I so, mean, so, obviously, you know, and Villanova losing one of their key players, you know. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, they, they just didn't have that punch last night, you know. <laughs> That was that was that was critical of losing the guy, losing him. And you know, like even a even defender too. So I mean, he would have been on uh, um, Babaja last night, who was tough, he was a tough player. So even 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 with them losing him, I think they still would have. I think they still would have lost. I think they still would have lost. Um, lost yeah. even if they had him in the game. I think that I think that Kansas was just they was just too much for him athletically. Um, Villanova is not a, was not a big team at all. And, you know, in Kansas, they get up and down the court. And, and you know, Villanova, they want to try to slow the game down, run their offense and, and stuff they, because they they don't score a lot of points. And, you know, Kansas is totally opposite. They're going to, you know, they want to get up and down the floor. And so yeah. that, that, that's going to be a good matchup uh, coming into tomorrow because, I mean, man, Kansas get up and down the court. I mean, Carolina, they only play about – right now they only play like five, five and a half players. So – I mean, yeah. it, it's going to be a track meet. So, can't, I mean, uh, uh, Carolina, go, they better make sure they get their electric lights in them because it, it's going to be a track meet because they get up and down the court. Man. You know, it's a short yeah. turnaround as well. If if Kansas don't put, push up the court, put ball pressure on the ball, and they let North Carolina play set games, North Carolina going to win a close game. Yeah. If it's close. They got playmakers. They, that kid love can score better than – even better than the kid that Kansas got. He a good scorer, but he get a lot of tip back. This kid Love is a one on one player, throw him off the pick player. He showed last night he can get to the basket and finish. So yeah, it's all on who gonna control the the, the game style. Yep, that's true. Yeah, you know I think the matchup to me, you know I'm looking at is McCormick, David McCormick from Kansas and Baycott. You know two guys that are physical presence, you know, you know, who's going to win, you know, that rebounding advantage, give their teams extra, extra, you know, neither of them are, you know, they're not going to run the office through these guys, but the energy does, you know, those guys bring to their team, you know, extra possessions, you know, could be a difference in the game, you know, uh, the little thing. True. true. And another thing too, though, you got to look at as well, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you know, Baycott, he, he tweaked his ankle. He said that he was playing. But if you know if he's if he's dependable and dependable he's been in the last few games that you know that they played, I mean McCormick is going to be <clears throat> McCormick. Excuse me, McCormick is going to be in the trouble too because McCormick is a good defender, but Baker the way he rebounds the basketball and how physical he is down there in the paint, I mean it, it, that that's going to be a really good matchup. You got to watch that too because if he gets him, McCormick in foul trouble and then you bring in another kid with a light foot. Yeah, I mean, that's a big drop off. Yeah, it's a big, yeah, a big drop off, and you know, um, so it's it gonna be interesting to see. But like, uh, McCormick had one of his best games yesterday. He had, well, I think, just twenty three was a good career high for him. He had yeah. twenty three. I think that's probably his best game he had in the tournament. Uh, I was kidding. Uh, I was going uh, to first uh, early. Lack of size and no Yeah. If I was Kansas, um, I would go early but, you know, to the post trip. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, whoever can get foul trouble in between those big guys is going to be huge. And I think yeah. the big advantage Kansas has got, you know, we talked about the lack of bench for North Carolina. You know, Kansas yeah. is right now, Grammy Martin, who is preseason, you know, Big 12 player of the year, you know, kind of disappointed throughout now, but, I mean, he's hot lately. You know, he could, you know, you need a shot, you know, he can, he can get it for you, you know, which I don't think, you know, the guards of Kansas, you know, you know their starters, backcourt, a lot of guys aren't going to, you know, go and get your shot at the end of a shot clock. Remy Martin is one of those guys that, you know, um, when things fall into possession, you know, he can go and get that for you. Man, he a quick burst of energy. Absolutely. You know, he's kind of that the best you know, thing, microwave the, effect. Yeah, the best the thing bench. from Car- right, the, the best thing from Carolina, they don't see a lot of guards like him all year. But I'm going to tell you the biggest match, Kansas has a kid number three. I don't know his name. He's a great defender, and they're gonna put him on love. That's gonna be the matchup of the game. Yeah, Harris yeah. is a great player. Yeah. Harris, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. be the matchup of the game. Yeah, yeah. he's a great defender. I seen him lock up the player for Miami like a week ago. Like he's a great defender. If he can hold love to fifteen on down, he's gonna be a blowout. They're gonna mm-hmm. blow North Carolina out. 
Yeah, you know, it just seems like half since halftime of the Miami game, this has been a brand new Kansas team. You know, they're down seven to Miami, and they just kind of turned it, it turned it up. You know, because really, I mean, they, you know, in round two of the team, they were down their two best players, and they won by five, blew a huge lead to Providence. You know, and then down, but you know, so they they kind of clutch. You know, they're not. I don't think this is Bill South's best team by any stretch, but. You know, right now, I mean, they're hot at the right time. And I think when you've got a tournament where there's no great teams, isn't you know, it's the team that – these are the two teams that are playing the best at the, you know, most important time, you know. I mean, North Carolina had an average of best season in their standards, you know, throughout the, the whole year. But right now, I don't think there's a, you know, a t- you know, we just – you know, praise them because they're a tough team, you know, they're streaky, you know, and I think they're streaking at the right time, you know, so I think you, you just, you got two teams, hot teams, you know, who knew who they are, they're going to play, it's going to, whether they make shots or not tomorrow night, I think there's going to be a lot of possessions because both teams are going to shoot relatively quick. Um, yeah. You know, it's just, you know, who, you know this, who's going to make shots, who's going to, you know, is Baycock going to win down those, is McCormick going to win down those, so those are kind of things I'm, you know, I'm looking at. What's your guys' prediction for tomorrow night? I'm going with Kansas. You know, I, know I want North Carolina to win. I'm a North Carolina fan. I just – it's a lot of stuff that's in Kansas' favor, and it's all done based on um, Carolina Rose making shots. If they role players making shots, it's going to be a tough game. But like I said, Kansas is a three-phase team. They're not one of the most talented teams that Bill Self had. But they have a lot of running defense. They can post up. They can play pick and roll with Remy Martin. The other guy, number thirty, he's he's a, he averaged like eighteen. Like he got a couple of players off the bench that's solid. Uh, so it's all on. But I'm going with Kansas. All right, Erwin. Same. Uh, I'm going with Kansas as well. <clears throat> like like you said, Jamar. Uh, you know, Kansas, they can they get it's going all three phases. I like I like Carolina, but I don't think I don't think they have a enough time in between games as for a turnaround for them to, to kind of get their legs up on them. I think that, you know, I think it'll be a good game, don't get me wrong, but I think once uh once the game gets to flowing, I think I think at the end, I think um Kansas will be a little bit more fresher than Carolina just because of, you know, they got they playing a lot more players. They have playing a lot more players than and Carolina is, and I just think at the end, I just think you know, with you know, with Kansas being the team that they are being so explosive on offense, I just think that they'll they'll eventually they'll they'll pull away with it. So Kansas, yeah, and I'll I'll finish off three for three. I'll pick Kansas too. I just just a little more. I think just well-rounded team. You know, like I said, I think Kansas. You know, North Carolina. How many times can you keep on playing these back-to-back games and not you know run out of gas? You know, but. Yep. I, in the end, I think, you know, it's kind of a neutral, it, guys. I think we want just a good game, you know, that lives up to the hype of a good tournament and give us a good, you know, finality uh, tournament, you know. It's kind of the yeah. <laughs> championship Monday is a little sad, obviously, you know, when you, you know, finally finish up, you know, the tournament, you know. But uh, it's kind of perfect timing as, you know, we wind down, you know, this year. We've got to hype up, you know, the NBA playoffs. So, you know, we got that going. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Aaron, Aaron. Sorry about your Lakers and tough position, but you know, <laughs> yeah, they are. yeah, they are definitely in a they are definitely in a tough position. Yeah, they don't need to go to the playoffs to get a Bears. They lost yeah, today. They, I know they play. I don't even know they. I, I know they played against. Uh, they played against Denver. I don't know if they. It was, there was a close game at halftime. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, <clears throat> let me check it out. But I hey, like I said, you know, I um we're not expected. I don't, I don't I mean if they go if they do they make lost. it in the playoff get playing game, uh-huh. they lost. Yeah. yeah. And we're yeah. not gonna make it there. Hey, they're not making it to the play-in game. That's fine. But the one thing that the, the another team that that that'll be is will be a shocker. You know, the Nets are the Nets are hanging on by a three. The Nets might not they they're right at the bottom too. Yeah, I think right now, I think actually in the East, I think all um, 10 teams are qualified. I think the the Knicks are 11th and they got eliminated from the playoffs. So they should, but they're not, I think the Nets have, they they only they were number 10. I know they were number 10. 
I've seen the yeah, playing, they're playing too. Yeah, so playing, playing game. Okay. Yeah. So the number the all ten teams are are locked in, but it'll be interesting because playoffs are all about matchups, you know. And you got the East, which is they're all just stacked up top, you know. Uh, um, you know, so we'll see how that finishes up. You know, Erwin, what you what you we, we talk about MVPs. You still uh, what you're thinking? Embiid still. I'm still, I'm still rocking with Embiid. Um, I still think he got it. I mean, I, um, I know um, with Jokic, he's been playing. He's still been playing great. I mean, he know he had a, he had a couple of monster games over the last, you know, last few weeks. But I still think, I think it's still Embiid's to lose. So I know, and a lot of the uh, NBA uh, sports writers, they're they're predicting and saying that you know they got Jokic winning now. It's like this is like the first time that Jokic has, has actually. Taking the lead, um, but again, Embiid. I mean, I mean, just look at what he's been doing. Like we've seen Jokic, we've seen Jokic. We know he's won MVP. Blah, blah, yeah, that's all fine. But if Embiid doesn't deserve one, then who does? Yeah. If he, no, yeah, right. yeah, if he doesn't deserve one, like who does? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, yeah, we know we got Harden now, but I mean, before that, he was running. Everything was running through him, you know, and he kept that mm-hmm. shit sell it. And you look at the East, I mean, every game's tough, you know. There's very few gimme games, you know, uh, keep your position. What, what, who's your favorite for MVP, Jamon? I just told somebody this uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, I, lately, I've been going back when I wake up in the morning and watching the games over. If we talk about MVP, the best player in the NBA, and not strictly off, can you make a three-point shot? Can you have a step back? Your game pretty. If about the, the best score, one of the best scores, defender. He passed, he rebound, he still, and he give maximum effort. I gotta go Greek free. He does everything you need. Rebound and box out. Like and I and I personally is a thought Kevin Durant was the best player in the league. But more and more I watch, I think we get so caught up in the style of the game. Game more than what he's actually doing. Like this, this, this young player, he's guarding the best player one through five. He's mm-hmm. boxing out. He's not. He's making his free throws when it's clutch. He hit a big three the other day. Like I just, I feel because now in the NBA, because a player didn't have one, I want to give it to um, MB. Want to get the Jokic, but we all know LeBron could have won it seven years in a row. But they, they wanted to spread it out. And I think that's bad. Like, if I'm the MVP, I'm the MVP. Yeah. Don't give it because this guy didn't have it. We gave it to Westbrook one year just because he had triple doubles. He was eight, seven seed. Like, you had a good year, but the same thing with the coach of the year. The guy from the Suns was the one, that, but uh, Thibodeau had a good season for the Knicks. And you just yeah. gave it to him just because the Knicks had a good season. So, I just feel like Greek Freak does everything without the fanciness, without the jump shots, without all the crossover. You got to worry about him on both ends, and he giving Max Maelva. We all know MB to get shy with the three point shot. Yeah. So I want to stay on the perimeter. Oh, yeah. I mean, if if uh, <laughs> if Giannis would ever just consistently hit that jump shot, I mean, good. I mean, what can you do? Like, I mean. He can hit it enough, you know, but you still he's gonna give you gotta give it to him because if you go up on him, he's just gonna blow right by you, or, you know. So he's a matchup nightmare. You can't go wrong there. And obviously he's best defender one on one defender in the NBA, but you know, for because he can guard, like you said, guard one through five. And not many people in the NBA can do that. Yeah, it's true. Uh, you know, yeah, you know, I, I, I I mean you make it, you know, you make case and I, I mean Jokic, the thing with Joe Kitch though. Is that you know he's doing it without a point guard, so he everything runs through him, you know. And, yeah. Um, and I, I could, I don't, you know, I would probably vote for him beat myself. But what Jokic has to do each and every game to keep his team relevant. Um, Thanks. Yeah, you know, that is true. <laughs> uh, you know, it's one, you know, one thing, and uh, what's his, uh, Murray comes back, but once Murray <laughs> comes on, I think he's just taking his game to the next level. You know. Okay. Uh, I got I got something for you, Ryan. Since you since you brought up that right there, well, you can say this you can say the same thing right now about 
Um, you can say the same thing about him. B. Let's let's look at it. I mean, he, Ben Simmons. Well, he that also he didn't play. He hadn't played. And then you got James. James Harden is there now. James Harden is not really producing like he like he's like yeah. he, like he had he was in Houston. So if you look at it, I mean, he's doing the same. He's doing the same thing. Absolutely, you know. Especially, he, yeah. I mean, I, that's why I said to me that's my vote is Embiid because I think right now the Eastern Conference is top to bottom a better conference. You know, with, and then you have to go and especially they're you know going into you know the Heat and uh, um, Celtics you know and all that you know so several times a year you know I think just to keep this team relevant I I go to Embiid easy but I'm just saying you know just kind of you know. You're saying both of these guys are kind of playing that point forward, you know, everything runs through them, you know, and they're getting the double, they have to fight through the double teams in the post and all that. So, uh, you know, <laughs> the, both of those teams wouldn't be nothing without them. And I think that's what the true MVP is, you know, uh, what, what, you know, elevating your team, elevating your players, you know, like both of those teams are getting the most out of each of their players, you know, and, and especially, you know, like, you know, Jamon said, you can never go wrong with the Greek freak for what he does, you know. I mean, we can give all the credit to Middleton and Holiday, but they're those are average, above average NBA players. But their yeah. team is nothing, you know. They're not NBA champions without you know Tupis, you know, last year. Uh, <laughs> I mean, when you know they wouldn't be. I a, think. Yeah, go ahead. I think the award should be given before the NBA. They should include what you do in the house in the Yeah. Yeah. I I agree. You know, that's you know, I think that's part of the playoff game play. All right, they get to the playoff, they're different players. That's true. Yeah. And 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 that's and that's the thing, okay. and that's it, that goes back to the thing too. Um, like hard. Like hard never showed has, has ain't showed up in the playoffs yet. I mean, he's. I mean, right. he, he's been a he's been a great you know regular season player, and even now, now he's kind of struggling. You know, especially with the with the new rules and you know the different hamstring injuries and all no that. You know, he's no. Been, yeah, no, yeah, he's been struggling with that. But but like you said, I mean, he he, he ain't he ain't never been a, a playoff player. Never been a playoff player. Always been in regular season. Never like, and if. If you go to an NBA game in the regular season, it's almost a joke. It's almost comical. Like it's like I tell you, don't waste your time going to watch the regular season unless it's a certain match. Half of the players not even running back. Like they not even trying. Like mm-hmm. so, whoever playing the hardest NBA, because it, you can't tell me Russell Westbrook is ten times faster than all these super athletes in the NBA. <laughs> but in the regular season, he looks like he's. <laughs> Ten times faster because he actually trying to get his stats. He actually playing for us stuff, but but in the playoffs, when everybody's giving Mac an effort, players the referee's not calling the whistle blowing the whistles as much of yet. They might have lost, but for yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as him, yeah, I ain't even just talking about stats. I'm talking about him showing up, him being there, him being the force. Like I'm even watching KD. I'm watching the man. You take so many plays off. He takes so many plays off, man. It's just, you. He gonna come back and hit a three, and you forget that I man. You just took five plays off. Yeah. Yeah. So. If you're really watching the game and like us, how we watch it and stuff we see, Erwin, it's totally different than the average person. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm watching, like, I'm going to give y'all something to watch. watch. Watch this kid love on defense for Carolina. That's that, you know. That's, that's, the, that's you watch what the game. Yeah. Watching. He's so lost. Him. He's so lost. So it just hey he might hey look he might be lost he might be lost but they only got but they only got five players so he gonna play so they got they can't take him <laughs> can't take him out they can't take him out can't take him out so but he gonna play 
<laughs> Actually pay attention. Yeah, he in trouble because the last six or seven of the game or ten possessions of the game, his man scored almost every time on kickouts. Because mm-hmm. he overhelping he why he maybe he tied, you know, because he playing the whole game. I can, and Hubert Davis ain't got nobody else to put in because the, the the white kid was getting killed all game. He left him in the game. <laughs> yeah. He was like, "Hey, we gonna we gonna outscore you, or you gonna?" Out- but out- he ain't got no. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, but you know, but he he was going to top five or potential top five pick though. So I mean, he was getting True. everything he wanted. Yeah, but still, like like you okay. said, it all really it all really came down to who was gonna who was gonna get the last, who was gonna score the most most because everybody played hard, everybody. For the most part, executed, but it came down to who, who really, who really wanted it the most, and who, you know, who scored the last basket. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Love hit a big three. He took it. 20, yeah, 20, it did. 20, he did. He, he took second. it. Yeah, twenty-two points in the he second took. half. He was clutch. That's yeah, for sure. Took. Let's see if he yeah. showed. It. Yeah, that was clutch. Yeah, it, you know, it's interesting to watch you guys talk about the little things that you know, the average consumer, you know, may not see during you know a game you know from you know running back to you know just you know lack of defense awareness you know that's you know kind of stuff you know where you know you know insight we like to hear from you know um oh yeah yeah jamon you know as we close out here what what's uh your social media where can people hit you up at um you can follow me on uh 22 reb instagram and uh i think my name on Twitter is just Jamon Goy, you know, simple stuff. All right. What about Earl Erwin? Um, Erwin mm-hmm. underscore Dudley35 on uh, Instagram and and just Erwin Dudley on Facebook. Absolutely. Again, follow us on the Sportscast and all our social media platforms. Uh, Mad Dog Report for myself on Twitter. It was nice to have you, Jamon, here giving us a some you and Erwin is awesome to hear you guys get some insight and uh, the grind of uh, playing overseas and you know uh, some, something you know our viewers can learn you know that you know and that's not everything is uh, perfect as we see over you know when we turn on oh, the television. No, not at all. A lot of you guys are grinding away. You know, got that passion for the game. You know, willing to uh, go across the world and you know uh, sacrifice to play the game you guys love and. Some inside, you know, that transition from uh, playing to uh, retirement, you know, uh, it was great to hear some, you know, honest conversations here. And we got some great previews of uh, the game, you know, tomorrow, you know, Final Four championship game between uh, Kansas and North Carolina. Um, so, close right. out, you know, any, any final couple, thoughts? I got, a, I got a couple of things I want to say. Um, you know, shout out to the South Carolina women. They they just won the, the national title for the women. They just they, they just beat. I, I figured they was gonna be UConn. They, you know, that's so no surprise. But also too, I, I want to shout out the uh, you know for the first time the, for all the people that they was able to sponsor and help put this thing on the HBCU All Star Game. I got a chance to watch that today. And if you didn't watch it, man, it was it was sweet. Um, you know, just watching being able to allow those guys from the HBCU to showcase their talent. Um, on a on a stage, it was on CBS, and it was you know it was, it was big. You know they didn't have a lot of fan support. They did have some fans, but for them to be able to go out and do that and be able to to uh, put that on, man, kudos to them for doing that. And then I also watched a, they have a um I don't know I don't know if it's, it's been going on for a while or not, but I, I watched the uh, a three on three um tournament also too, where they were playing for money. So it's two different conferences. So it'd be like for example the SEC. And the ACC versus the SWAG or the MIA and the MIAC. And so you're playing for money. And I got a chance to watch that. I don't know how long that's been going on either. But man, that's that's great for, for them to be able to put on that and being able to allow, allow kids to, you know, to potentially win money and stuff like that. So kudos to all those people that, that put put on put on those different um events because you know it's big like to see HBCU and that's one of the things that Deion Sanders has been advocating. You know, for HBCUs, being able to, to being able to market them just like any other, the, you know, the Power Five conferences and Power Five universities, and so um, it, it just a, it was just a big step, you know, this year for them to do it, and just hope you know they continue to grow it. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of good basketball that you know that those universities play. That you know don't get the media coverage that um, attention. You know, and I think you always said a lot. I think it was 
it seems like you got two major HBC for basketball. It seems like Howard gets a lot of these recruits. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in football, obviously, you just talked about Jackson State, you know. Yeah. But your boy, uh, Mo Williams, just took the job, I think, at Jackson State. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he's already out. He took the so, means, yep. Yep. So hopefully, you know, get things rolling there for them. You know, it's awesome. I think Chris Paul was headlining the HBC game. Um, you know, he's a big advocate. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, and I, LeBron sponsors um, Florida a and now. Yeah, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of quality, you know, um, athletics, you know, and, and, and not just quality, but just getting attention to, you know, that I don't think they get the support maybe financially from, you know, because they don't get the games on national TV, you know, that maybe they get that recognition and the, the you know, that they deserve. Uh, anything else you want to close out here, Jamon, before we head? No, no, just, you know, Alabama's not – Name anymore, um, and um, uh, thank y'all for ha- thank y'all for having me on the podcast. Anytime y'all need me to get on, just hit me up, and I'll be I'll come on anytime. Absolutely, love to have you on again. And, you know, especially you know, we got to if we get close to the NBA playoffs and during the playoffs, you know. So, uh, appreciate everybody uh, joining us tonight. I know, uh, you know, we'll be back here again next Sunday night. And uh, have a good night, everybody. All right, all right, peace, peace.